states or abroad, no one's safe from the talk is a fraud. fraud. In the states or abroad, no one's safe from the talk is a fraud. The following goes beyond the show and beyond the gram to bring you all the fraud that's fit to be uncovered. This is the Fraudcast, and now, here's your Fraudcaster and the woman behind Frauded by TLC on Instagram, Katrina. Hi, and welcome back to the Fraudcast. This is episode six. I can't believe I'm at six episodes already. Every week coming out, the support you guys have been giving us that I've even gotten six episodes in the can, and it's um, amazing. Listen to you, in the can. You, you already have the terminology down. It's almost like I'm a professional now. Oh, wait, I spoke before you introed me. I'm sorry, I'll be quiet. Keep going. That's Hetero Life, mate. Hi. He's back again to join me. <laughs> Which means she couldn't find another co-host, so here I am. So here he is. So welcome back to the broadcast. If you're new and you're just joining us for the first time, welcome. We're glad that everybody is here. We are reading what you guys are saying and the feedback that I'm getting and we're all getting has been amazing. The five-star reviews you guys are leaving on Apple is been they've been amazing i am so glad that you guys are enjoying this work that i'm putting out there it's like my baby and i'm putting it out there into the world and to for everybody to judge and enjoy and you guys seem to be enjoying it you really you kind of hit the nail on the head too when you called this your baby because you uh i see you every day planning for this thing and and you know imagine the pressure that would be put on a mother if she was giving birth to a baby that was then going to be judged out there for the masses and people could rate the baby on a scale of one to five stars, right? Like I, I seen baby pictures of myself. I probably would have been like a one or two star baby. I was not a pretty baby at all. I was a 10 star baby. 10 star baby. I believe that. So, um, you know, I'm so extra. It takes, it takes guts to do this, especially for someone like Katrina here who has, uh, no, broadcast experience whatsoever so um you know i think that uh things are getting better as we go along and for those of you i've, I've seen this comment i think once or twice in the apple uh apple podcast comments and reviews um giving us crap for asking for five star reviews well i listen to a ton of podcasts um my profession is sort of in the broadcast realm and uh there's not a good podcast out there that doesn't ask for five star reviews because trust me it does help and uh so thank you to those of you who have given this uh five stars uh we're not asking you to be dishonest please don't think that if you don't think this podcast is good if you think it sucks don't give us five stars that's fine but if you do like it because most people now here's a little statistic for you oh god you know how much i hate statistics here's a little statistic for you did you know that um now this is a this is a statistic that uh, is, is across all spoken word platforms, radio and podcasts. Only about 2%, 1 to 2% of your audience will ever engage with the show, meaning reach back out in some way, shape, or form. Interesting. 98% of people just listen. That's all. Wow. They're not going to comment. They're not going to leave reviews. None of that. So what we're asking is if you are one of those 98% and you do dig what we're doing, just it doesn't take long. Just on your app, on your phone, just click that five stars. It helps out. Well, I feel like I get a lot of engagement with you guys either through the Instagram pro uh, lives that I do, Frauded Night Live, or the DMs or the conversations we have on the, the, the pictures on Instagram or on the Facebook group, the Fraudcasters. But for those of you who are listening who aren't on any of those social media platforms, I can't engage with you in those regards. So any way that I can engage with you, I would be happy to do so. Yeah, just reach out. And by the way, I want to say this too, because I am a perfectionist when it comes to this production stuff. Um, episode five, I guess it was, that was last week, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, episode five from a production quality standpoint sucked. And that's my fault. And I apologize. Hopefully this is going to sound way better. Hopefully we fixed some stuff. He tweaked some stuff. He did some special sauce magic and hopefully that this one will sound a lot better. Yeah. The widgets weren't widgeting or something. I don't know, but I got it fixed though. Okay. But in the, at the end of the day though, Rocky did end the cold war. Anyway, indisputable. Can fact. I, can I get on with the tea? You've got all this stuff here that you want to talk about. I'm probably preventing you from doing that. So I'll just show right, it. They want to hear. Go for it. What okay. do you got? So this week is the tale of two Silvas. So we have Stacy Silva and Darcy Silva dominating the headlines this week. And 
We're going to start with Stacy. So we had a little bit last week where we talked about how Stacy and Florian seem to be on the outs again, and Shanti, the model from Belgium, oh, yeah. had posted pictures, or I had posted pictures of her. And, Belgian models. Right. Yeah. So this week what happened is Florian implied that Stacy was pregnant via some prison break clips. Hmm? Yeah, so the TV show Prison Break. Yeah. I didn't watch the show, but I've been no. educated on it. He was posting a clip where one of the characters is pregnant and the guy is saying something, puts his hand on her belly and says, I'll always be with you, like I'm not leaving you. And Florian posted that clip along with a few others and he tagged Stacy in him. So the the fandom sort of went a little, huh? What does that mean? Is he trying to be You guys were all a flutter. We were trying to figure out what he meant, right. and a source reached out to him and, and tried to sort of ask him what was going on and got basically what's a, what I would call a confirmation from him. And I say confirmation because he is saying it's true. That doesn't make it true. He just said, he implied back that it was in fact true that Stacy was pregnant. Now, I don't believe that's true, and we had some other... Another source that'll... In, wait, wait, wait. You don't believe it's true? I don't. And based on... Is that what you were about to get into? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, I know, because you have this whole dumpster diving thing going on, right? And I'm just picturing you in Stacy's dumpster diving, literally, right. for negative uh, pregnancy tests. It kind of, it kind of get Yeah, yeah. You yeah. didn't do that, did you? I didn't. Okay. I didn't, no. All right, good. No, I don't know where she is. at the. Oh, she was in Turkey. She's getting ready to go to Turkey. You haven't been time. to Turkey anytime recently. No, so. okay. not, not ever. So I also had some, um, some information from another source who has been discredited, which we'll get into in the Darcy Silva portion of this, but had said that he had seen Tr Stacy really, really drunk the last couple of nights. There's no way she could be pregnant. This pregnancy has not been confirmed in any way other than Florian kind of trying to imply it. Personally, I think it is just a ploy to stay in the public, to stay, to keep relevant, and to try to, I don't know, he and Stacey, he was tagging her again uh, in cryptic quotes. I don't know. Do you, do you see this a lot from uh, former cast members of the show? He's that, never that, even been a cast member. He's so he's the, just trying to get on. He's the boyfriend of a... Not so. See, so Darcy Paint is the, the picture cast, for me. Darcy we'll is the cast flow, member. Flow chart. Go ahead. Darcy Darcy's the cast, the cast member. member. Darcy. She, Darcy has a twin sister named Stacy. Who, right. Who's not really a cast member, but she has made appearances. She's been on the uh, the show where they're in bed watching it on TV. Pillow talk. Pillow talk. Yes. Yeah, I've seen her on that. And she's been in a couple of scenes in the the uh, the seasons that Darcy's on. Okay. So she has a boyfriend slash fiance from Albania named Florian. Uh, of course. So this is Florian that we're talking about. As one does. As one does. Right. And there's competition between Darcy and Stacy because Stacy got engaged immediately. And oh, gosh. Darcy's not engaged, and it's a whole thing. Oh, my. Yeah. You know, I have family members that, uh, cousins that are female, and that's real. Like, the competition, like, who can get hitched first? Yeah. Who can spit out a bunch of babies first? Darcy, I guess, won that one. Does Stacy have any kids? Yeah, she has a couple because she's divorced well, who's as well. older? Who had it to first? Who won that battle? I don't remember. Who won round one? I don't remember. All right. I think they, didn't they get married on the same day? Oh, they got divorced on the same day. I think well, their divorces cute. were final on Did the same day. Did they have the same divorce uh, lawyer? Probably. Did they go together? Probably. That's they have a awesome. very toxic, dysfunctional relationship. But they seem like they like each other on Pillow Talk. Yeah, but not on anything else. So, that all said, Florian has been posting all these things, trying to be like cryptic about his relationship with Stacy. In the meantime, Shanti is not going away, and she's do, she's coming out loud, and she has decided to she she posted a video saying that, and she tagged me and, and several other bloggers in it, and posted it herself saying that she was just with Florian a couple weeks ago, and he wasn't talking fatherhood at all. And oh, by the way, here's a picture of us the morning after. Now. She's, and then she puts out the picture afterwards. So after that, Shanti keeps going and she puts out like five or six videos in which she tries to set the record straight. Where okay. she, she's explaining that she and Darcy and Stacy and Florian, they were all friends. 
and they followed each other's social media. And I know it's that's been commented on. And apparently Stacy sent Shanti to Albania to check on Florian. Why? Why, why would someone do that? I, I don't know. Why, why would someone, hey, could you do me a favor? Like one time I couldn't find my mom. This is real life. I couldn't find my mom. She lives in North Carolina. Um, and I was also in North Carolina at the time, but I was about two hours away. And she was supposed to be there and she wasn't. I couldn't find her. She wasn't answering her cell phone. And so I had my aunt who lives like 15 minutes away go check on her. That to me seems like a reasonable request. My aunt didn't have to go to another country to do that. <laughs> well, Shanti vacations in Albania frequently. So she didn't get into that level of detail about why Stacy asked her to do these things. So Shanti did as instructed and she checked on Florian as when she was in Albania. And well, apparently she checked on him really, really closely because then they started sleeping together. And after she starts sleeping with him, I know, girl code, right? Wait, wait, huh? Yeah. Just like that. Just like that. Wow. So, so, so moral of the story, don't have her ever go check on a friend of yours for you. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Um, certainly not a male. And after they start sleeping together, he talks about, she She relays that he talked about how, how unhappy he was with Stacy, how he wasted four years of his life on her, especially after she wasn't going to do the paperwork to bring him to America and all of these other things. So, so this is their, they're now sleeping together all the time, I guess, whenever she's there, uh, whatever. Um, we know that Florian is not necessarily the most faithful guy. There was this dalliance with a woman in Canada, and I've also seen screenshots of conversations he's had with a, one of my followers. Uh, one, Ooh. Yeah. He's putting the move on, uh, on, a, on a faithful broadcast listener? Yes. Wow. Yes, and uh, there were... Florian, you know what's going to get talked about on the show, dude. Why even bother? It's, they're flirty. They're flirty messages. And, you know, they are rated, I would say, rated G to PG. They're not overtly sexual, but they're certainly flirty. And they could have definitely gone there, I think, had the follower allowed it to go there. But she didn't because her understanding was Florian is still with Stacy. Does this happen a lot? I'm, I'm curious now. Fans of the show following these people on social media, if you have like an attractive woman say, who's following these people on social, like I joked around with you before about past sources. And at one point I was convinced you had a gay Brazilian boyfriend. That was Larissa's baby daddy, by the way. Right. So, um, does that happen a lot though? Do, do these male cast members, seems like it would be more, I'm calling out my own, uh, gender here. seems like it'd be more apt, uh, more likely for a male cast member. To, to kind of be on the hunt and, and, oh, look at this cute chick from Wyoming who's reached out to me. Hey, mm -hmm. baby. Yes. What yes. are you doing it's at Laramie? A, it's a problem. It's a problem. The groupies, I've seen the conversation. I've seen conversations. I've seen, oh, God, I've seen text messages. I've seen screen grabs. I've seen, I've heard stories, second, third-hand stories about things some of the male cast members do and how they love the female followers. It's a real problem. Okay. I, well, I wouldn't call it a problem. I mean, to each their own. Here's what I'm interested in though. I would like to hear from a woman who did this and, and actually took it to the level of meeting in person. Oh, okay. I, like, if I, you're that person, reach out at frauded by TLC. We won't, we won't have to use your name. You can, we can change all the names mm -hmm. if you want. I'm just curious to hear the story of how it went. I know of one for certain. Really? And I think you know who you are. So if you want to reach out to me again and we can talk. We can do like an interview. We can change your voice. We do all that stuff. So I, I think I'm interested in hearing about it. I think other people might be as well. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, so that so look at that. I'm giving you an idea. I'm an idea machine over here. Oh, God. Don't don't just no. Just stop. Uh, so 
so that's so the so where was I? I, I, I you completely distracted me. Oh, Flo, uh, Stacy, Florian, Shanti. Mm-hmm. So Shanti puts out these. Yes, Shanti puts out all of these videos. It's like four or five of them. She ends them with a video montage of pictures of her talking to Stacy and I guess maybe explaining this. I'm not entirely sure what's what the deal is because I think it's it's just screen grabs, not video calls of her calls with Stacy. So it, it it's messy as hell, you guys. And I I don't know, but then Florian posted some cryptic quote today in his stories and I don't know. I have no idea what's what's happening with these people and who knows? Do you know what the cryptic quote was? I mean, I'd have to pull it up. Okay. It's something about loving somebody all the time, even if other people roll their eyes, then that's when you have to love them more. And he tagged St- Stacy in it. I have that tattooed on my back, that exact quote. Is that, do you have your, is that your tramp stamp? I think it was uh, so- Socrates who said that. <laughs> so I almost said so great. <laughs> Bill and Ted. Excellent. Yeah. Great movie. Okay. There we go. The movie quotes again. Oh, no. So, getting then into Darcy. Darcy. <laughs> We're going to talk about Darcy. <laughs> so we've I've t- never met Darcy. <laughs> we've talked about this I situation before with Darcy and these allegations that Emma was making that somebody named Michael leaked information and video to Emma, who's Tom's sister, about Darcy. I don't know how you keep up with all these people. It's very complex Tom's flow sister charts. and Emma and, and, <laughs> and Michael and Darcy and so, Shanti and Stacy and yeah. Yeah, that's what my brain is full of. Okay. No that, wonder you can't remember to put your dirty dishes in the dishwasher. That's why I forget to take the dogs outside. Okay. All right. Fair enough. So... So Emma had commented about these allegations that Darcy had cheated on Tom with this guy named Michael because Michael had sent these videos to her and was complaining about how terrible Darcy was. We, we recapped that a little bit in an episode or two ago. And then recently, uh, Michael had reached out to me trying to claim that all of that was bull and he was hacked this was the mysterious he commented on a picture of darcy and suddenly his phone was hacked and making noises and posting things without his knowledge that happens and we played the clips of his his uh confession that he'd actually never met darcy i never met darcy i don't know darcy never met anybody named darcy (laughs) don't know how to spell darcy (laughs) so that's what it sounded like so hand on the bible i don't know darcy right so that was michael and then just this past week, Michael resurfaces, and he... Does he still not know Darcy? <laughs> no, no. This time he resurfaced, and he says, everything I told you before was a lie. Oh, great. I want to set the record straight. Oh, but now he's telling the truth. Now he's telling the before, truth. Before, that was all BS. Right. But now you're about to get the scoop. The real truth. I'm about to hit you with some truth bombs. Allegedly. All right. Which, so I'm already dubious because you're, you know, you're telling me that you well, lied yeah. then or you lied now. You are uh-huh. automatically don't have credibility, but let me hear this. So I hear, I listened to his story and we talk video chatted for probably about an hour. And during that time, he t- decides. He, So he tells me that he and Darcy had actually met before. They met through a mutual friend in New York City. They'd been seeing each other for about three to four years. He comes to America quite often, and they see each other. And that time span spanned both Jesse and Tom, although he said, well, let's just leave Jesse out of it for now. And he wanted, he called me because he wanted me to put this, all this information out there because he wanted to ruin Darcy because he was mad at her for I whatever. I want to ruin Darcy. I don't like Darcy. <laughs> for whatever happened. Go to hell, Darcy. But he was still in love with her. But I still love Darcy. So he told me that she was an alcoholic and would call him at all hours of the night when he's in the UK, call her, you know, would call him at four o'clock in the morning. Claims that he lost his job due to this, which is a whole, like, How? you need to have boundaries, dude. Because yeah. if you're answering the phone at 4.30 in the morning instead of sleeping, because and that's on you, dude. Sorry. Wait, was it 4.30 in the morning uh, British time or Darcy time? I, I don't know. Right. I think Darcy time. Give me facts. I, I was, you think I'm going to believe anything this guy tells me? 
<laughs> yeah, if you're looking for facts, this guy's the wrong guy to talk to. Right. So he, he also said that he was supposed to go to Turkey with the Silva twins to get his teeth done along with them. And se- she had sent him Western Union. <laughs> Wait, I'm, what? Is that a thing? You yeah. go to Turkey to get your teeth done? For the Silva twins, it is. They what, got new what veneers. What did you get done? Veneers. Oh, okay. Why Turkey? I don't know. This right. is a question we're all asking, but of all of the things... Never realized Turkey was the veneer capital of the world. I don't Who think, knew? I don't think it is. Oh. <laughs> but they went. All right. Allegedly, he was going to go. She sent him money, and he sent me a receipt from what the Western Union transfer, and it has all of Darcy's information, all of Michael's information, phone numbers, addresses, all of this stuff, which I blacked out and posted on 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 my Instagram. Which he, you can find by going to Instagram and searching for at frauded by TLC. Yes. And then he also sent me a picture of the two of them on FaceTime where she was in the small p- bar picture and he was in the big one and he's like in bed, she's in bed, she looks like she's sleeping or crying or something. She Wait, he was in the small picture? No. She was. She was. So then that's her screenshot of FaceTime. Because when you FaceTime somebody, you're in the small picture, and the person you're FaceTiming with is the big picture. Is it? Yeah. Maybe it's not. FaceTime you right now? No, no. Oh. Well, it's all, it's, I don't know. Anyway, he sends me that picture. Well, how would he have that from her phone? I don't know. We need to find this out. Oh, my God. Like, I'm going to believe anything this guy tells me. But you just, <laughs> so. I'm trying to explain what the background is, because there's okay. more. All right. So, he sends me this picture. He also sends me videos of Darcy one of which he she is saying his name. She's saying, oh, Michael, both of these videos are not safe for work. <laughs> OK, <laughs> both Ooh, of Michael. these both of these videos would be considered, I would say, revenge porn because he po- he Ooh. sent them to me and wanted me to post them to ruin her. because That's what he said. Michael, dude, ain't happening, brother. Which obviously I'm not gonna do. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously. I'm not gonna post those. But can I see them though? I'm not gonna share nude pictures of someone without their consent. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I respect your boundaries. Thank you. And so let's go to Turkey and get our veneers done. <laughs> well, we need somebody to Western Union us money. Yeah. <laughs> Darcy, well. I know you hate me, but you know Darcy. So anyway. Um. So, so that, that all happened. And, you know, again, at this point, he's got no credibility because either he lied the first time or he lied this time. Either way, he's lying. And I don't believe anything that he says. So I don't know if their relationship was one in person or just over the phone. They clearly had something going because she was saying his name in this video. This video appears to be the same one that Emma got because it, it looks like it's the same screen grab cover picture so then it doesn't end here (laughs) oh it goes on it goes on all right two days later he reneges his story again retracts everything he retracts everything and goes back to his first story which is i don't know darcy i never met darcy i don't even know how to spell darcy right okay and that he was angry and mad and he hopes that darcy will one day talk to him again and everything he said was a lie and she doesn't have a drinking problem he's never seen her have a drink and it was that he was drunk he was angry he has mental health issues All of these things that were to try to explain why he spent an hour on the phone with me, telling me all these things that he's now claiming are a lie. Do we do we have this on? uh, Do you have have that saved? I do. I have. Why don't we play it? We will. We're gonna play a little bit of it right now. All right, let's do it. I did leak something to fraud TLC UK, uh, TLC US, or whatever it's called. Um, I did leak that when I was angry. I was very drunk. I was very stupid, I was very immature, and I let myself down, I let Darcy down, I let my family down. I get this message from him, you guys. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I feel like I feel like I need to have a man-to-man talk with Michael right now. Does Michael listen to the podcast? Uh, I believe he does. All right, Michael. Well, Michael. he at least follow, used to follow my Instagram page before he blocked me. That's okay. coming up. Oh, yeah, like he's not still following it. Okay, hey, Michael, listen, buddy. Had a real life mate here with a little bit of uh, 
of life advice. I asked, I, I imagine I'm probably a little bit older than you. I've gone through some things. I've experienced some stuff. Here's the deal, man. I don't know what game it is you're playing here with this. I've never met her. Oh, yes, I have met her. Here are a bunch of screenshots. The, the thing with the, with the FaceTime screenshot really is suspect because if she is in the bigger picture. No, she's in the little picture. The little picture, then that's off of her phone, not his. So that's weird. Okay. But anyway, Michael, here's the deal, buddy. I don't know what you're trying to pull, but it's not working. You, you've ruined your credibility, what little credibility you have. You're just this mystery man with a fun accent that changes his story 180 degrees from one day to the next. My advice to you would be this. Go find a nice girl that's not on television, that, that is out of the public. Maybe you crave some kind of public spotlight. And, and for that, we're kind of giving it to you right now. And I sort of feel bad for that. But... That's what you do. Hey, this, that's fine. That's your Instagram account. Yeah. If without that, we got nothing. So um, maybe that's a thing you crave, dude. But like, this isn't for you, man. This <laughs> it's as the kids say, that ain't it, chief. This ain't it, chief. <laughs> so you know, go find a woman that's not on television that can make you happy. That you don't have to call up one day and tell some random stranger. Uh, I've never met her before, and then the next day, oh, here's some nudes of her, and then the day after, nope, just kidding, never met her before. Just quit that shit, man. Okay, boomer. I'm not a boomer. Don't say the okay boomer thing. I'm not a boomer. I'm Generation X. <laughs> so am I. But it just fits. We're the forgotten the, generation. That's what the kids are saying. So I, I, was know. Tr- I was trying to be but you it's know, so dumb. We're relatable. Not, we're not boomers. I was trying to be relatable. I know, but that bugs me when they say that. But it's okay. Anyway, can I finish? No, I think the, we should need to talk mic- about the okay boomer thing. Okay, well, we can do that in couples therapy. Uh, we don't. <laughs> we're do, we need, what, do we go to couples therapy now? <laughs> no, we don't. I thought that's what this podcast was. <laughs> oh, no, that's what the dogs are for. Okay, got it. <laughs> so uh, the, the big one, lunchbox. Lunchbox and snack pack. Yep. So after he sends me that 10-minute manifesto that you guys just heard, I, a portion of it. Yeah. I, I sent him a message asking him how much Darcy paid him to make that message. <laughs> and he then sent me a couple of messages back, which I didn't get to listen to before he blocked me and they disappeared. Uh, like he yeah. unsent them. And then there's more. <laughs> so then on, was it Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Sunday night, Sunday night, right after the show. Darcy posts a picture of our friend Michael with the caption, my love. And he's, dun, dun, dun. And he's commenting all over the place saying how he's seen her and he's like, can't wait to see her in person. And he didn't leak any photos and videos, which he just said he leaked them to me in the clip that you heard. Yeah. And and I I couldn't read these messages oh because God. he has me blocked. This but guy's a nightmare. Followers took big screen grabs of him and sent them to me. So and then she pulls her picture down and pretends like it doesn't exist. So what? here's 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 the theory. A lot of people. Listen, the internet have. never forgets you folks. Yeah, the and internet this, never forgets. This is the theory that a lot of people have: is that she is the one that wants this stuff out there. Kim Kardashian got famous for ha- having a sex tape. Oh. That, because I sent this message to her saying, this guy's leaking these, giving me these videos, and you might want to do something about oh, it. And she that hates makes me. so much sense. She hates me, so she hasn't read the message yet, but she knows this is going on. She wants to be a Kardashian. Yes. Darcy Kardashian. It yes. even has a nice ring to it. So the the one of the theories. And Stacey's the other Kardashian. She Chloe? They're twins, though. Uh, okay, I don't know the Kardashian dynamic really. So, that's the theory: is that's that good, she she is behind this, wanting this out there. Well, you've said before, and I feel like I bring this up every time I'm on the show with you, that uh, the, the TLC loves Darcy, can't get enough of her, and that there is even a potential uh, like Darcy specific show in the works. Well, so here's one of the other things that Michael told me is that. Darcy and Tom are, are filming the season that we know that, that she was filming. We saw some video of them together. Allegedly, they're t- filming together, and they break up in this episode or this season that she's filming. But I don't, don't know, know what the show is. No. It may just be the Darcy, sh- Darcy show. And this guy has no credibility, so what do I believe from him? Yeah, that's true, too. You Good know? Point. So, but that makes a whole hell of a lot of sense, though. Yeah. So you I know. can see someone like that. And especially, you know, I, 
I feel like I've watched more of her episodes with you of the show than anyone else. And, and I know it's, you know, you don't want to be the person that, that completely judges a, a cast member of a reality television show based on what they show you on television because, as we know, producers can shape it and make it look really however the hell they want. Um, but, but from the start, like, I thought, wow, this chick is so attention starved. Yeah, because you saw her first episodes when she got her <laughs> Louis Vuitton stuck in the escalator at the airport in Amsterdam. Right, right, right. That was when um, what Jesse. Was his, Jesse showed up and, and greeted her with a poster of himself. <laughs> yes, the yeah. banner. Is. Yes. <laughs> what the hell was that? Yeah. <laughs> you guys, yeah. that was awesome. That was, but, but then even then, like, she was all, like, kind of needy and, oh, Jesse. Like, when, I, oh, gosh, yeah. Like, the, the, the episode where um, Jesse comes to America, coming to America, Jesse edition. Uh -huh. And he's never seen New York City before. Mm -hmm. And so he's like in the cab, like looking out the window going, holy crap, look, this is the Empire State Building. Mm -hmm. Look at all these tall, like he was in awe and she was all pissy because he's not paying attention to me. But like, he had been to New York City before, but yes. Okay, I'm just buying into what the producers are oh, feeding right, me right, right now. I'm sorry. You know? <laughs> I was naive watching that at the time. Right, right. And I think at that time you only had like eight Twitter or Instagram followers, and I was two of them. So, um, <laughs> yeah. You and your alt account? But she, yeah. <laughs> she was why, like, all like, he's not paying attention to me. What's in the event? I'm like, give the guy a break. He's never been out of his country before. He's never been out of Amsterdam. Now he's seen America for the first. Like, I remember the first time I ever saw the big buildings in New York City. I was the same way. Mm -hmm. like, like, I, did, I don't know. I couldn't tell you what the person I was with was saying to me because I was just like, oh, wow, tall oh, buildings. Bless your heart. Yeah, a little kid from North Carolina, absolutely. <sighs> so I, I get that part. And I always kind of felt a certain way about Darcy ever since that episode in those seasons. And, and she seems to be the type of person that would totally try to stage this whole thing to get her name out there mm -hmm. to try and be more famous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, seems legit. So, so that's where we're at with them. We we don't know what ha what what the current status of them is. Uh, Michael has blocked me, so I, I can't see the the stuff that he posts, the comments he posts on Darcy's pictures or anybody else's. But he can't seem to stop himself from commenting. Oh, he's not going to stop on all the haters and everything. <laughs> so this is what he wants. If you see it, screen grab it and send it to me. You, you know, he's talking about me. You guys heard him say you know, that he leaked this stuff to me because he was angry. You know, um, not not a not a good look there, Michael. No, no, bad bad look, buddy. Uh, that ain't it, Chief. Did I say that right? Okay, boomer. <laughs> not a boomer. <laughs> okay, so that's it. That's the tale of the Silva twins. T tale of two Silvas. Tell. That might be a good name for the show. A hey, there it Silvas. is. There it is. There's the title. So in our social media roundup this week, we need, by the way, producer, since you're here, we need yeah. like a sound clip for <laughs> that. I don't know. Something going into, in, into the social media roundup. Like, like, like the sound of like keyboard clicks and no. mouse. And like yeehaw. Can you do it? Give me a yeehaw. I think you just gave one. To get okay. One. So yeehaw going into the social media roundup. <laughs> oh my God. Go ahead. <laughs> So what we have, hop along, Trina. <laughs> so what we have is Blake and Jasmine. We have a leaked alleged wedding photo Ooh. from them. This is you congratulations know, to the happy couple. I don't know that they're really a happy couple, but we'll see. We'll right. see. They just debuted this week. There's not a lot that we know about them except for that. You know, her twin sister's there, and he's sitting in between, and it's some get out type of shit happening and the sisters are going to bury him in his mother's backyard. Whoa, it's, what? it's all crazy. We, I don't know. There's some, there's something going on here and we don't know what it is. They just debuted this week. We don't know. Okay. But we have a photo that was leaked from the Instagram where it appears to be, they got married in October. So, uh, there we have it. We also have, Corey of Corey and Evelyn from The Other Way last season did an AMA in which he probably revealed a little too much. It's one of those no comment comments say more than anything else. Oh, yeah. People kept asking him about Evelyn, and he kept saying, I can't talk about that because of my contract, because of my contract. I can't talk about that. So, like, eight to ten times he said this, mm -hmm. that he can't talk about his relationship. Now, 
when these people are under contract, they're not allowed to allegedly, we see it happen though, their contract says they can't talk about the status of their relationship during the filming of the show. Makes sense. So the supposition is he's filming again a second season with oh, her. Oh, okay. Right. And right on. I got you. And he had wanted, we knew that he had wanted a second season and she was not, she was lukewarm on it. But based on his answers to his AMAs, where he's saying he can't talk about this stuff because of his contract. Because if he wasn't filming, then he would be able to talk about it. Right. He All wouldn't right. have a contract. So in the Some end. Great detective work there. I know. That's, that's using the old noggin. Yep. That's all that law school learning. <laughs> That's right. Um, and some, so this this irritated me a little bit, a little bit. Emily got attacked. So Emily of Emily and Sasha and their beautiful baby David, whose birth we saw last week, aka Pornhub. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The porn you were watching in bed. She posted something about her getting. David vaccinated with whatever age appropriate vaccinations he was getting. And mm. she got ripped to shreds by anti-vaxxers who oh, get the hell out of here. Anti-vaxxers. Right. So she shut up. She shut them down, which I I'd like to I'd like to see in the, the fire from her. It was kind of nice. <laughs> like, 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 here's the thing, right? If you're I'm getting into social issues now. Uh -oh. Sorry. If you're an anti-vaxxer, it's fine. You don't want to vaccinate your own kids. Fine. It's fine. That's your choice. Yeah. I don't agree with that choice, but as a person who was vaccinated as a child and and had a child who was vaccinated myself, I'm not going to go knocking on your door and telling you what an idiot you are. You make your own choices. Okay, but here's the thing. Like, the thing about vaccinations is that it's, it creates what's called herd immunity. Oh, I know. So people like me, you know, your hetero life mate who are you know, have compromised immune systems thanks to their yeah, multiple it, it sclerosis. Opens you up. And right. So I become susceptible to the shit that your kids are carrying around when you bring your germy little measles infested kids into the McDonald's where I'm trying to get baby frauded his, you know, Big Mac. But you are vaccinated, so you should I am theoretically except for, theoretically though, there's a lot of Gen Xers that had to have to get a booster because of something. But anyway, can we can we move on now? Okay, boomer. <laughs> Okay, somebody who may qualify as a boomer, maybe not. I think she might be a little younger than the boomer generation, is Mother Devin. Now, you guys remember Devin and Ji Hoon from last season of The Other Way. We know they're filming again. They're in Korea filming, although at the moment they are back in Utah for the Thanksgiving holiday. One thing I learned is that Ji Hoon is about to have his very first American Thanksgiving. Wow. So that's going to be interesting. That's awesome. And how I learned this information Welcome is... to America, ji -hoon. Is Devin's mother, Alicia Clegg, sat down with me and gave me a great interview, which I'm going to sh uh, share with you all. So hi, welcome, Alicia, to our uh, broadcast today, also known as Mother Devin, Devin's mother of Devin and ji -hoon. Welcome. Thank you. Most people really haven't seen me because I really didn't appear on the show a lot. No, that you didn't. You were not there, but you've been, you were talked about on the show, but you have not made much of an appearance on the show. Is that going to change with this next season that is re being recorded? I don't know that there is going to be another season, sadly. They, <laughs> I'm not inside the loop. I wish I was, but I'm not. I'm kind of like blacklisted from everybody. So I know what I know is what you guys know. So I go on to all those websites and like read stuff. I hear that uh, uh, Laura, Laura, right? Um, Laura was the one with uh, Aladdin. Yeah. She, she was pitching something. I find I find her and Aladdin's story quite interesting. So no, I have no idea if they're going to film anything. Well, I had confirmation from other sources that Devin and Jihoon are currently filming for another season. So... Really? More than I do. See, I'm way outside the loop. All right, then. So you may be just as surprised as the rest of us by what happens on screen. Well, I, I was surprised by the first season anyway, you know. So uh, if you want to go to a backstory, yes, what would have been so interesting. I, I finally, so I don't really ever watch reality TV because I got my feel of it when I was younger. 
I used to love reality TV when I was younger. I watched the very first MTV uh, reality show. What was that called? The Real World. Yes, The Real World. Yes, but, I watched so those I loved two. It. I loved it. So I finally broke down because Devin kept talking about TLC 90 Day Fiance, 90 Day Fiance. And so I went and watched the before the 90 days. And that, my friend, if they had caught Devin and Ji Hoon before the 90 days, that would have been so interesting because everybody forgets that there was that very first meeting. And when you watch those shows and you see those first meetings, it is like phenomenally interesting because they know each other. They knew each other. They'd been talking every single day for like six months. So they knew each other. But I guess when she was at the airport, right? So she's at the airport to pick him up. And he walked right past her, like didn't even nothing, just walked right <laughs> past her. And, to, and I can only imagine her face because I was like, well, what what was what what was going on in your face? And she was like, I was like, do I look horrible? I didn't catfish him or anything. We talked. I talked without makeup. But then also you want to see the first kiss, right? The first kiss or the first hug. And so I guess when they finally did like hug, it was like some weird awkward thing she was trying to explain it to me and I was like oh my god that would have been so great to see on camera oh I'm see- sorry that we missed that I know but it, when you think about it those first meetings like back we're old enough to remember when uh you could go to the airport and actually go inside the airport and see people leaving and stuff like that so mm-hmm. there, there was always this interesting thing to see people running up to each other or how they would react to see if it was this kind of weird, beautiful, romantic look, you know? <laughs> and so, but going back, so she starts talking to ji right? They find right. each other from some international dating website. Because I think at that point, Devin was just kind of lost in love. And, you know, so she's like, well, why settle? And I'm going to go and find a man that I am physically attracted to. And she has always been physically attracted to Koreans. She finds just everything about them physically attractive. And I'm like, okay, good luck with that, sweetheart. <laughs> but so he meets, she meets Ji Hoon and she's talking to him for a long time. And she's like, she comes to me and her father and says that he's going to come to see her. And now, I don't know, uh, she was an adult. She's an adult, but she's still a young adult. And we're just like red flags flying up okay so you have been talking to him but and so she wanted to rent uh you know those a a and r b and b airbnb airbnb he wanted to rent one of those for like i don't even know if he stayed for two weeks or three weeks and the reason for that i'll tell you why because some bad shit happened and it would have been great tv would have been great not between those two but (laughs) what caused me not to be on the show because of all the, I had to go to court. Like I was going to two different court cases for like six months. So I was in the courthouse every day for six months where it got to the point, the bailiffs knew me. I didn't even have to check in anymore. I just waved, you know, watched a <laughs> well, lot great. of- Great, I, I wanna come back to that, so. We will. But so- <laughs> We'll come back to so that. She wants to rent the A&R B&B and thing. And I'm like, no, that's not safe. You don't, he could be a killer. He could be a killer. You don't Come know. harvest her organs, like he well, said on he the show. Well, he was afraid of that. He <laughs> was afraid that we were going to, like, so he's actually more afraid to come here than we were for him to, to come here. You know, he was being brave. Everybody was telling him he was being catfish, so he was being brave. So she finally, okay, I'll spend one night with him at uh, the the place where Tae Young was created. <laughs> <laughs> And well, it was this just it was a romantic close place close to the airport. So we have all these anniversary inns. They're in really old buildings. It's really nice. It's kind of like it's like seeing what Utah's really like. But yeah, so it was meant to be like kind of a relaxing situation where they could have a little bit of wine because you can't like in Korea, you can drink anywhere. Right, but Utah's dry. Utah's very strict with drinking laws. And so she got one bottle of wine, and then I guess she was all lovey-dovey. And yeah, oh my God. 
Anyway, <laughs> next we'll thing you know, <laughs> we'll get back to that. So then, uh, her and Ji Hoon they decide they're going to drive to Las Vegas for two nights and then drive back. Which okay. that was her idea because she she had noticed that every single boyfriend in her path, if you go on a road trip with a man, you actually learn who they are. And right. I I, I, I do agree. recommend, yeah, I recommend to anybody if you're going to be in a relationship, go on a road trip. Well, you find out if you if you travel like at the same speed, at the same kind of how yes. your travel styles are. I do think that that says a lot about somebody. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, you know, and so they go to Vegas and they spent two nights and then they came back. And that was the thing. He was going to stay here because he was going to meet Drusilla. And so I, I it feels like it should have been three weeks, but I'm not sure. Uh, we'll get into that. So he comes <laughs> to me and he was such a nice young man. He was doing dishes. He was cleaning. He was great. It was just. It was really weird. It was as if he'd always been part of our family. Oh, it was the weirdest thing. It was just every all of us clicked together. It just there fit. Was, yeah, it was nothing. It was like one of those weird things that you only read about, and you're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it had to be. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, um, Devin knew. Devin knew that she had procreated on a day that she probably shouldn't have. <laughs> you know, I know that was in the back of her head because they they took a pregnancy she took a pregnancy test and now you can take pregnancy tests um I I bragged about it because I really wanted Raven I planned Raven and so I took a test you know you want to take those early tests they're, they're extensive right. but they work and so I guess he and Devin knew that she was pregnant two days before he was leaving and oh, they were okay. hiding it from me Okay. And I should have known something because I'd gotten, that's when I got the phone call that um, my sister Melissa had been arrested again. So and this so is I, the, that's the crazy aunt? That's the, that's the, yeah, she has gone off the deep end. It's so sad. Like the whole, she is, oh my God. I know the listeners want to hear some more about that. So it, we may yeah. it, get into that to the extent that you can talk about some of those details, but let's. I want to hear more about Devin Jihoon's first meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So he was getting a little bit nervous and I could see he was a little bit high strung. Right. Uh -huh. But I, apparently he and Devin called his parents and, and he told them that they were pregnant. But they didn't tell you. They well, they don't they don't speak English. They don't have my number. They don't know. You know. <laughs> right. Until right. Me, until Jihoon left. And you know how I found out? Oh, Oh, oh God! How did oh, how did you find out? It was so fucked up. Well, because she probably knew I was going to be very angry. Because she, it, what? <laughs> she asked me to grab something out of her purse, and I, I don't even know what she needed. It was like something. And as I'm opening her purse, she goes, "She goes, no, wait a minute, it's not in the purse." And what should be in the purse? Pregnancy test. Her pee stick. Oh, <laughs> so welcome. You're going to be a grandma again. <laughs> what are you going to do? What, what, what's happening? She's like, oh, we're going to get married. I'm like, oh, what? Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, so how did you feel? What was your reaction at that point? Like, you you just met Ji Hoon, which who you said was very lovely and fit into your family, like but then now you like they, she's pregnant and they're gonna get married yeah. all at once. It, marriage is fine. Marriage is a good thing. Kids are kids are so important, and it's so hard. And really, in the back of my head, okay, this guy can just. Take off, just disappear. He's from another country. I don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're, you guys are gonna get to know each other. Fine, fine, great. She had a good job. It's fine. Good health insurance. Okay, another joyful life. But you know, the circumstances it, it, are a little the off. Circumstances were off, you know. And so it, it, and I'm shocked. I, and I do say this that it, it shows that Ji Hoon is of quality stock 
because he didn't run. He could have ran. I agree. And he decided, you know what? Okay, I didn't plan this. Let's see if we can make this work. Other people have done it. We have to try. You know, we have mm -hmm. to try because there's a baby involved and everybody knows that it, the best situation, obviously, is to have both parents living together and happy. That's the Correct. key there. And happy. Happy, there's yes. Nobody any good if the kids are, like, miserable because the parents are miserable. Right. And so, right. fine, she's pregnant. She's pregnant. So, they're talking, talking, whatever. And uh, so, Devin, on her days off, because she works her she worked her ass off, right? I, I always admire that about Devin. And nobody knows how she's kept a job, a steady job since she was 14. Can you tell us old. what kind of work that she was doing? So, so uh, she had gotten her degree in pharmacy, but that didn't pay well, right? Okay. So she'd been a supervisor at a call center. And so then she got uh, another job offer from Winco. Win not Winco. I always call it Winco. It's not Winco. It's we don't need the names. Oh, just, okay. But it's yeah. not Winco. Just Winco's like generally. Yeah. But uh, so she's working for a, a high-end uh, furniture store uh, okay. calling. And most of the time you have to have a degree to work there, but because of her experience. So she had a good job, okay. good insurance. So when she had days off, she's like wants to unwind. And that's when TLC comes into play. Now you have to imagine, imagine this all happened in such a short span of time. So she finds out she was pregnant. I don't even know when he came. Like, I guess you, we could count backwards because I knew he came to, to, they went to Las Vegas in February, but mind you, I can't, the year before, so last year, is such a blur to me because it was so many different arrests and so many court dates that everything just kind of is like. Got it. Eh. Got it. So, but, so, so, so she's watching TLC and she's telling me all about 90 Day Fiance. She's, I don't even need to watch it because she's giving me a play by play, play by play, play by play. <laughs> play, by play. <laughs> then I had to do some work for homeschooling and I'm trying to write up a lesson plan. I'm kind of getting a little bit irritated, not much, but a little bit. She comes in and she's like, oh, and so and so, so did this, did this, this. And I'm like, you realize that those people don't love them, right? They're just using the American <laughs> to get a passport here because everybody wants to be an American. I go, you want, you want me to buy into your show? Then the other way, you find me a couple that goes the other way and I will watch that show because I, I don't believe that that is love. So she goes out and she pops in and she goes, oh my God, mom. They're doing it. Guess what? <laughs> they're doing the other way. Like, oh my God, they're doing it. And she goes, should I, should I uh, audition? Cause she, she, she plans on moving over there. You know, she wants to move over there. Be a little bit easier because she could be a stay-at-home mom because she really regrets not being able to be with Drusilla for the first two years of her life. You know, she had to go back to work like at six weeks. It was awful. Terrible for mothers to have to do that. But so I go fine. But you, you don't think anything of it because you're like, man. They got back with her the very next morning. So it's like in a span of 10 hours. And then they're talking to her. And they're talking to Jihoon. And she'd had this trip planned for Ji Hoon and his parents to come to Las Vegas. So they already had like this okay. beautiful okay. Stuff. So it had nothing to do with the show. They were coming in because you have to get the parents' blessing because it's old school and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So they were planning that trip. And what's sad though. So they'd already been planning this. They get in touch with TLC. TLC's, oh God, we're all over this and gets yeah. cameras out there and gets it all done quickly. Exactly. It happens so fast. I don't even... Because I would like to say it was like two weeks before. It, it was really, really fast. Okay. And I know that they had already almost finished wrapping everything already. So that's why they, like, if you really watch the show and you see how it's cut together, it's almost as if Devin and Jihoon were, like, inserted in the first few episodes that they were in because they had already filmed and shot. All the and other stuff. Yeah, so they got... They I do really know that their stuff was filmed after a lot of the other couple stuff was filmed, oh, yeah. like yeah. as far as like the time of year and whatnot. I do know that. So yeah. that so makes sense. Like very end of like whatever. But poor Devin, 
she ended up getting so sick. And, and that's why it's so sad when I was, we were watching the Las Vegas thing because I, I wanted to, some jackass said something. And so I don't, I don't respond anymore. But yeah, I was like, smart. She's dying. She literally was so sick. If you look at it, if you go back and you look at her face, you can see she's all swollen because she'd caught, uh, I don't even, it was like E. coli or something, right? And so she's Ooh. in Las Vegas. She's sick as shit. Then Drusilla gets sick. And then nobody understands that Utah is like a 50 minute flight to Las Vegas. (laughs) (laughs) And it's really cheap. We have this Southwestern airline. You can can get a flight to Las Vegas for 60 bucks. Right. So, okay. So you came and got Drusilla. Yeah. Cause she just sick. So sick. And Devin was sick, but she was a trooper and she kept filming, even though she should have, she should have come home too and been treated. And so by the time she did get home and was treated, then all of a sudden all the other problems start kicking in. It raised her blood pressure. Then, uh, it, you know, it put stress on the baby. And before you know it, the doctor's like, we're going to have to take Deliver him early. early. Yeah. And she was so upset. She was so sick. And it, it, it just was heartbreaking. The, the whole thing was heartbreaking. And TLC flies out, and they didn't realize that Utah is very, the hospital we picked, very good, strict hospital. And they wanted to film the birth so bad, like they had this part on. <laughs> uh, they couldn't get it. They weren't going to let them. They won't. They will never let anyone in the hospital. But I tell TLC, I'm like, it's okay. I will wear a GoPro, and I will film it. I will- <laughs> and the hospital wouldn't <laughs> let you? No, I could. Yeah. No, all that film of his birth we have on her YouTube page. Oh, is, I think I saw yeah. a clip of Yeah, this so she has weekend. she has the entire birth on there because um I retained the rights, so we have shared rights for Tay Young's birth. But I was so nervous. So imagine if you will, I had the GoPro right here. I'm like <laughs> completely covered. I'm I have the phone because I have to talk to Ji Hoon and they're filming Ji Hoon from the other side right? and so it was just this massive stress thing. And I'm like, it was the first time I'd used a GoPro. So then I was really, <laughs> I'm like, Oh my God, I'm going to screw this up for them. So what's funny too, this, this whole scene reminded me of when baby frauded, uh, my son was born. Uh, I'd actually lived in South Korea for a year with my now ex-husband, but at the time we were married and I came back to the United States to deliver and baby daddy couldn't come back yet because of whatever was going on with the military. So he wasn't present for baby fraud its birth. And back then, this is 2003, when my kid was born, we had flip phones, right? We didn't even have any of this other technology. So it was like we were talking to him on the phone and then they're wheeling me in because I had to have a C-section. And then they wheeled me back out and then they were like, okay, he's born now. Like, so we didn't have any of this fun stuff. So when you, when I saw that filmed and, and yeah. Hamley Ji Hoon's reactions to it all, I was like, oh, it was all verklempt. It was really, really sweet to see. It was sweet. It was yeah. sweet. Ji Hoon's parents, they, they didn't think they'd ever be grandparents. Oh, just, I guess Ji Hoon just, he didn't seem interested ever. Never. He's kind of a kind of a big kid, so you know, maybe oh, they didn't know that he was going to grow up and get his shit together. Yeah, he had to be forced to grow up. I think <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that's how it works, right? It's just, it, it, it's just they're so old too. They're like not old, but like they're not so old, but like they're they're in their sixties, and so I I could imagine being in your sixties thinking I'm never going to have a grandchild, mm-hmm. and all of that changed in like a split second. And okay. so that, that's why I like seeing, that's why I liked seeing Devin's story on, on TV. It was interesting. I was watching it every week. I was so excited to see it, just see how it played out. And Dev, Devin it, and Jihoon's story has become a largely a fan favorite. I mean, there's always the outlier haters and, and stuff, and, and that's going to be the case no matter what. But I think by and large, People are big fans of their story and them individually and are very interested in the the genuineness of their relationship and the hilarity of, you know, 
uh, Ji Hoon and his clean anal and the puppy and all of these things that are all that there just seems to be their very genuine life. It's not scripted and it's not it's it's not crazy drama, but it's it's highly entertaining. And I think that translates really well. So I think people are really excited to see them on another season, which oh, you, you guys, can't, well, maybe which you, you deny happen. Well, I, I, have, <laughs> I have no idea. Like, I don't know anything. I don't talk. I don't like I'm out of the loop of everything. I, and I think it's just a safe place to be because then it makes it fun. I don't, yeah. I don't want spoilers. Like I was, I was looking forward to seeing her in Korea. Um, when she went to go see him, she's been to Korea. She had been see the the timeline starts getting mixed up because it was so fast. Because she'd gone to Korea, the baby scene that there was. She was telling oh, me that right. they cut out the entire scene with uh, his friends, so they only showed. So I guess they'd had a dinner with all their friends. So I was like upset that they didn't feel that. So I wanted to see that. Oh, okay. Like, they should like do, I think they should do like, you know how they do the bonus scenes? Yeah. I think they should do that more. Like have like random bonus scenes that didn't quite fit the storyline. Right. But just like see it. Yeah, they, that would be fun. You no, know, there's so much that they filmed that they didn't get. Like Devin was in Las Vegas for like two weeks. And oh, with on the, the family? Show, yeah, on the show, it looks like it was, like, two days. You know, you know what I mean? It's like they didn't show. I'm like, you guys did stuff, right? I, You know, I have pictures of them going to um, the Grand Canyon. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. they don't show any of that. Well, I don't. I wonder. I'm thinking maybe that was, like, a day off, you know, because they come. They, they The camera crews will come. Mm-hmm. And then they have to set up and then they have days off and they have all these rules that they have to follow and everything. But I'm surprised people don't get sick more because these people, they'll travel like from India and then jump on and they're here. And it's like, oh, my God, oh, what germs did you bring me? <laughs> you poor bastards. How do you have a personal life? Do you imagine? Right, That's right, what? right. Right. I know um, in some situations, in some countries, they hire local Folks, I know in Brazil they've done that. The crews that followed Paul and Carini are local Brazilian film crew. So there's there's sort of a different setup. They're like subcontracted out from Sharp. Uh, so a slightly different than the TLC Sharp situation that like you guys would probably have. I don't know what what, what the crew situation is for Korea. I don't know if they're hiring local people in Korea or sending their own folks, but I guess it just depends on a lot of factors for them. Yeah, I would assume so. And contract situation. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, timeline wise, we get up to the point where Taeyang is born, and you're there at the hospital, and uh, there the Jihoon and family are in Korea. And so, at this point, we haven't. I think we've we've seen you a little bit on camera. Um, but you were talking about how you there was something that happened that made you not be involved yeah. in the filming. And if that's related to the crazy aunt story that Devin talked about on her social media, oh. if you want to share what you can share about that. Two aunts. Actually, I can now share everything because all the court cases are over. Um, I think the my younger sister affected me more than my older sister. My older sister is the crazy one. So when I say my older sister, it's the crazy one that I, man, people need to stay away from drugs. Like if ever I've seen an anti-drug commercial, it is her. Because she went from, if you think about it this way, uh, my older sister went from this beautiful soccer mom, ballet mom, Mommy blogger, going to mommy blogger conventions, being in, you know, everything's perfect world Mm -hmm. into literally a junkie on the street working with sex traffickers and just throwing it all away. Yeah, well, addiction doesn't discriminate. I mean, I'm the face of addiction, too. So, um, but it's. I know, and I know that it doesn't discriminate, but it's like, it affects people so differently. Yeah, yeah. Where it's just a shocking thing, and it it just, 
it right can, now she, she, it destroys she families her, yeah it it does it does she and she can't come around so Devin's obviously she she's afraid of her now she has every reason to be but as long as Devin's not alone in my house she's fine because there's so many people here to protect but so the, as the story goes so crazy aunt was trying to kidnap Devin into the sex trafficking him. ring so oh yeah it it was so bad so first off you go back so when she was just barely pregnant with Taeyeon so she's just barely pregnant Melissa had already been arrested three times, three times, and on domestic violence, on drug charges, on loitering, and she keeps getting away with it. There, there's something really wrong with the justice system sometimes. <laughs> like, where, I, I swear to God, you're watching going, how, how is she, it's as if she has been graced with getting away with everything. Because the very, very first charge we had on film, her beating her husband, tearing down his pants and screaming, then grabbing her kids and bolting down the freeway going 100 miles an hour. And she gets away with it. She gets a slap on the wrist. It, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an interesting it just, system. It, it starts escalate. Like if I had done that, I would be rotting in jail forever. I swear, I swear, I would be running in jail forever. So it escalates, right? So all of this starts escalating. And uh, she, had, my mother, God bless her soul, allowed Melissa to go and stay at her house. She just had rules. Nobody at the house, you know, she's scared. Melissa's promising she's drug free. So I go, I go and I'm like stalking my mom's house, like just watching because I want to see, I want to see. And sure enough, as soon as my mom goes to work, all these cars ascend on her house, and all these people go walking into the house. And I was pissed because my mom's old. You don't do that to an old person that, you know, and it's scary for her. Walked in. I walked in like an idiot, but I, I had my mace on me, even though that wouldn't have worked. I probably should have been packing. But so I walked in, <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Melissa like freaks the fuck out. She runs out. All the people run out, which was nice. I was like, oh, thank God. Who <laughs> dodged that bullet, right? And she goes off and she runs and I'm trying to talk to her. I like following Melissa, trying to talk to her, just trying to talk some sense into her. And then she leaves and she gets arrested again. Fine. Go pick her up because she got out of jail. Don't know how. So I pick her up to bring her here to give her her clothes. And that's it. I'm like, I'm done, Melissa. I'm going to give you your clothes, your stuff, then you're over. So she's she's wasting her time. And we should have, that's the thing with family, is sometimes you're a bit too naive and a bit too well, trusting. Sure. We enable our family a lot more. Yeah. So so how does this then, so we this, bring this, this back is where to. It, this, yeah. where, this is where it happens. So. Okay. Uh, it's time for Devin to go to work. We don't want Devin or Melissa in the house with Drusilla. We don't want her in the house with Drusilla. We don't want her here. So um, I'm like, well, I can drive her to the bus station, but it, there's no time. So we had to decide, does Devin take her to the bus station alone? Or do I, with Drusilla, drive Melissa to the bus station alone? And so... Devin's like, no, it'll be fine. So she gets in the car and that's when the problem started. And what made the problem worse, and thank God Devin was smart, is that Devin's phone wasn't working so she could only text. Yeah. So that okay. makes the situation. So she's driving. So they get in the car together and she yeah. like, yeah, what happens here? Yeah. So Devin is going to drive her to the bus stop, right? The bus stop is on a particular place that's close to her work. So it's not that far away. So she drives and Melissa's giving her wrong information. She's telling her to go to this area of town that Devin's like, no, you know, she's like, I may not be from, but I'm not stupid. So then Melissa starts jabbering on and on. And she goes, you need to call off work. You need to call off work. And I'm like, what the fuck is call off work? What does that mean? I guess that's news speak for call in thick. <laughs> like, you need to take me 
to Logan. You need to take me to Logan. And I have this guy that I have to pick up. So she's starting to act really weird. And uh, then she, she says, you need to pull over because I need to clean the car. So Devin kind of pulls over. What? And all of a sudden, Melissa starts like yelling at her, saying, I need to drive. We need to make sure this car is fixed. I have someone I have to pick up. And Devin's like, you're not driving my car. You're not driving my car. And she's like, just get in the back. Get in the back. I will drive. I am your aunt. You will listen to me. Get in the back. And Devin's like, no, no. Get in the car. We'll, I'll drive you to the wherever, right? So they get back in the car. Devin's smart because she's like, where can I go at this point? She was close to my mom's work. And my mom works at a place that had a lot of security guards. So Devin pulls into the work. And at this point, she is texting me. And I've gotten a hold of her father. We're calling the police. And so I'm talking to the police while Devin's texting me. And I'm trying to give them information. And uh, she goes, I pulled into Grammy's work. That's what she called mm -hmm. it, Grammy's work. And I go, oh, my God. So then I'm like texting my mom. I'm like, go out, go out, get the security and go out, go out. So then Melissa <laughs> is like seeing, like screaming and shouting. My mom comes out and then my sister is triggered by my mom. She starts screaming and she got in my mom's face. And Devin's like standing there going, oh, my God, I'm going to have to protect Grammy, but I don't know how. And they were about to go to blows, about to go to blows, yelling and screaming. And then all of a sudden, Melissa starts saying that uh, Devin and Jihoon are from North Korea and they have a bomb and she needs to steal the car. So she's trying to get the car. They have a bomb and, and, and yeah, and just steal the car. And pulling and pulling Devin and everything. But luckily, the cops come at this point. And at the same time, Steve gets there because as soon as I told him what was happening, he was like, I gotta go. Go. Steve is your husband, right? My husband. So Devin's dad. Devin's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So at what point in this there's transaction? Guy, well, that's that's what where. It gets very <laughs> so where's the sex trafficking come in? There's this guy. So where Devin? So at Devin's work, right where she works, where oh. Melissa knew he would be, even though she was driving around, she was waiting for him to get there because. There was a walkie-talkie that they were using. So this guy was at Devin's work waiting. The cops drive by, nail him, and he actually was a known sex trafficker. Uh, and so he was told that he, and he gets away with it because he was told by Melissa, the aunt, that Devin and Melissa were just going to drive him up to Logan and everything. Okay, so so <laughs> this, this whole thing, from what I can surmise, is crazy Melissa, drug addict crazy Melissa, was going to try to get Devin to this guy so this guy could sex traffic Devin. Yeah, so she could get her drug. Nice. And it was, it was sad. It, it, well, I didn't know, we didn't know that she would go that low. Right. But the plus side of that, even, you know, you got to look at the plus side, is Melissa ends up driving out to my other sister's house, my youngest sister that's alive, drives clear out. She lives like two hours away. And uh, she tries to convince some of her kids to get in a car with her. Yeah. So the court stuff regarding all of this Melissa stuff was happening at the same time Devin and Jihoon were filming, and therefore yeah. you couldn't be available for filming. Yeah. Court stuff. So all this court stuff kept happening. But at the same time, I'm also going to court for my other sister and that tragedy that unfolded there. So I'm dealing with this horrific death. And then I'm dealing with this sister that's gone off the deep end. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do not this. to not to um, rip a wound off. But the, the tragedy with your other sister is that she was murdered. Correct. Well, she wasn't. See, I can't say that because there's no proof that she was. Okay. Murdered. Okay. okay. So the circumstances around it are really suspicious. Horrific. 
Okay. Really horrific. So she either killed herself or she was murdered. Okay. okay. Either well, way, you're dealing with this way, horrific she, tragedy yeah, if, in yeah, your family. And we had to, like me and my younger sister, we, we did, went through all of the pictures and reports. And then we found out something else that we probably didn't want to know. We're like, damn, Allison had the worst week of her life. And it it's so sad that people are that mean to each other. Yeah. It, it's so cruel. And we're to a point now, and, and I'm sure Devin posted about it. It was like just, I think it was only two weeks ago that we found out nothing, slap on the wrist, no more case closed. Nothing. Nothing. On that, on We've been going... The- yeah, for Allison, like we've been going to court for a year because she died in December. So it hasn't even been a year. Like, we've been dragged on and then nothing. And I'm like, and this is, it, it's a common thing. When you start, when you outreach with people, you start finding out that it, 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 it almost seems like only a select few of people actually face anything you know so many people get away with it and i saw that i saw that i was going to court every week and just watch it It was interesting at least it is interesting to be in (laughs) in that kind of court because it's the justice court so you get criminal criminal court yeah (laughs) but uh, there was one case where i actually got to see just the arraignment of a murderer and the parent the the family was sitting there and they bring the murderer in he was such a smug piece of shit looking at them. Like he was so fucking smug. And I was like, I know, I feel you people. I felt them because it was like he was hurting them by this just. just mm-hmm. Yeah. And then there's other people where you're like, oh, I feel sorry for them. What, what happened to you? How did you get to this place? I don't know how judges stay sane, honestly. Yeah. Um, I don't practice criminal law, thank God. So I think it would be yeah. hard. I do work I do work in the justice system. I do volunteer work in the jails, but that's a whole other thing. So in the midst of all of this tragedy and crazy in court and stuff with your sisters, we have Tang being born and all of this. So this is like a beautiful, happy thing. Yeah. So can, what can yeah. you tell us about how Taeyang may have changed the dynamics of everything that was happening, given well, that backdrop. It's funny because um, everybody can see uh, the gender reveal party because that that was really important. It was really for Steve because he's like, no, we don't have boys in this family. So it was really exciting to have a boy. It was unique. We're like, oh, what do we do with a boy? Because we're all girls <laughs> and I have a lot of girls, you know, so we'd never deal with a boy. And it was so cute because... Um, they don't have middle names in South Korea, right? And Devin did not want Jihoon to pick the first name because she wants to pick the first name. I want to pick the first name. So <laughs> she she talks about how we have middle names, right? Middle names. And it was so sweet because he took so much time oh. and researched so hard for that name, Scuddy. And oh. I know everybody's like, what, the f- what is that? It's actually the largest star in the solar system. So oh, what he wanted well, to do, so he sweet. watched... Yeah, he watched all these videos about outer space and the beauties and bigness. And he wanted to give his son something bigger than life. And then he was like studying all these stars. And then it finally came down to this beautiful star and it was named Scuddy. And so Devin, she's like, you know, it has no. Scuddy, what is that? That is so sweet, though. Yeah, that's that's why I think ultimately that's why it flew, because they're. They're both at the heart, Devin and Jihoon, is that despite some of their idiocracy, right? Getting pregnant, (laughs) knocked out the first time. That's idiocracy. Despite all of that, there's this genuine sort of sweet, actual love that you don't really see in the world anymore. They have that genuine, like, Romeo and Juliet love, which let's hope it doesn't turn into that shit. But you know what I mean? <laughs> so it was, and he really did care. He cared so much. It was so important to him. 
And he did feel so bad, but you can't just change tickets. It, it's like nearly impossible. And Devin knew that. She's like, oh, I know that. I shouldn't even ask. She felt bad asking him. So she's like, he's going to look like an asshole. No, but, you know, it's fine. My, I said, yeah. He, my baby daddy wasn't there. You know, yeah, he would be great if he was, obviously. My parents stepped well, in. For me, I got to yeah. see the baby. Yeah, yeah my, my parents were, yeah. were there. <laughs> my my dad had not been able to be present at the birth of his all of his kids because we were all C-sections. And back yeah. 100 years ago when I was born, they weren't allowed in the operating room. This yeah. time he was allowed in. And so, like, uh-huh. he got to cut the cord on behalf of baby daddy and carry them uh-huh. down to the nursery and all that stuff. So he was very, yeah. very moved by it. So it was great to have that experience. So, you know, and th- we're no worse for the wear. They have an incredible relationship. It's not like their relationship has suffered because he was yeah. not physically present at the birth. Yeah. So they'll be fine. Uh, what can, what else can you tell us? So some of the questions that people had for you are, is Jihoon as funny in real life as he is on the show? He actually is. Okay. It's funny. He cracks jokes all the time. And, um, oh, man, I wish – they can't do it because it's not PC, but you should hear him do a Korean accent – English. So like he speaks Korean as though he's an English person speaking Korean. <laughs> it's so funny, you know, because he, right. he has the harsh. Act. So it's so funny to watch it. He's so funny. He's so nice. And he loves, he loves, he loves trolling Drusilla because Drusilla is the funnest to troll in the whole world. And they really? get along so well. It they, seems like he, it. There's a lot of pictures that he posts yeah. or whoever's behind his account posts. Yeah, because he, he genuinely, no, he posts his own stuff. Okay. He does. Um, it, so he he was a camp counselor when he was younger, so he at least, you know, knows. Okay. And, and Drusilla likes playing video games with him, but yeah, he's he's actually that funny. More so. They <laughs> nice. He's just like cutaways. Yeah. Is his English improving? <sighs> <laughs> no. So I understand it the way I had a pr- production source tell me that when they like they're in their early part of their relationship that was being filmed, like there was always a translator on set, like her trip to Korea with Taeyang and stuff, that there was always a translator on set between them, that that's how badly their language differences were. Well, I so, think because Devin, so... When Devin and him are alone together, if you speak really slowly, he can understand. But okay. imagine this being <laughs> on television. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, and, and I know there were translators there as well because the parents do not speak English. The father, the father, Ji Hoon's father, is um, really working on his English. Aww. He's That's doing nice. really. He loves. He really loves. Uh, Tay Young and Drusilla. He just, he's super happy. So it seems like from what we've been able to see on the show and from social media is that their, Jihoon and his family have really embraced Drusilla into their family, which is, which is so great to see. Um, I would be remiss uh, against, you know, with the viewers and the listeners if I didn't mention. So at the beginning of the season, we see Drusilla being crazy. Right. We see her running around on counters. We see her, you know, with her hands all up in the scrambled eggs and things like that, throwing throwing a tantrum at the airport, which, I mean, I can't blame her. I'd throw a tantrum at the airport, too. But in later scenes, she seems sort of a lot tamer than that. So can I know Devin talked about her being a wild child. Can you give us a little behind the scenes of what Drusilla is really like? Like what's the real oh. Drusilla? So she's she's not a wild child. What it is is um so me and Devin when when Drusilla's uh going to be born, we sit down and we have a discussion on how we're going to raise her because it's just going to be me and her. Devin has to work. So, Devin, give me your expectations of how you want your child to be raised. And, I and we do- know that Drusilla's father's not in the picture because he was abusive and, and whatnot, you know, I think, right? I can't legally talk about him. That's there's, what I thought. Yeah. So, okay. there's no, it's non existent. Okay, that's fine. He's just, he's not in the picture. <laughs> okay. 
she was just spawned from the heavens. Anyway, so we had a discussion. But for, the, but for those listeners who don't know this, Drusilla's father is not in the picture. <laughs> she, she only has one parent on her birth certificate. Okay. So, there you go. There you go. So one parent okay, so you guys sat down. <laughs> we sat down. We had a talk. And what we had noticed is... Um, a lot of parents were being like really weird. They weren't being consistent and everything. And there were too many pansy kids where, you know, it's just like, oh my God, afraid of everything. And just, so we watch all these different things. Okay, let's try the non-helicopter approach. Well, we'll set boundaries, but then we'll let her be free and kind of grow into that to see what that accomplishes. And even though it's difficult because she's so physical, um, what we've garnered, so I let her on the countertops, which really pissed me off watching those comments because I had her on the countertops because I would have her help me cook. I also have her help me do dishes and she helps me with garden work, but it, it works out because then she's not going to be that little kid that's afraid to do it. It's fun to her. So she's mm -hmm. fun to cook. It's fun to clean. It's fun to help out. So she also jumps. She's very brave. So uh, on the trampoline, she can jump so high. She can do flips. She taught herself how to do flips. She was walking at nine months old. She's so physically athletic that she could be, if she has the right teacher, she could excel in like gymnastics or any kind of sport. So we, we see that. We go, okay, she's a sporty chick. So then you go to all of the, the sporty parents that have these sporty kids and be like, what do you guys do? How do you handle this? And it's scary. It is scary, but you have to let them learn how to jump. You have to let them learn how to land so they don't break anything. And so she's, she's successfully done that. And so for the most part, she's actually a really good kid. But when she's active, she scares people. So as far as like like her, what we see on the show, like I said at the beginning, we see her, you know, climbing all over the counters and the ceiling and you know whatever. And obviously, it's going to be cut and edited to make it look like she's well, but, like the spawn of Satan. But, but then yeah, later, we see her normal. being reasonable and normal, right? Like so, like obviously, I would say she's probably somewhere in the middle of that, right? Yeah, and as she, a, no, you guys just, made a parenting choice about yeah. her physicality. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And so, and actually it's been positive for other kids. So uh, the best way for her to not act out is every day I take her to the park every day. We live right by a park every day, go to the park two hours and they're done. And I actually recommend that for any parent with a really rambunctious young boy <laughs> uh, that's acting out in school. If you take them to the park before school, that helps get out all of that energy and then they don't have that same kind of like, I need to go, I need to do something. Yeah. So, but wow. she has helped like little kids that were afraid. She pushes them and we're seeing kids playing again. So it started out with us just at the park, maybe a couple of people. But now if you come to our park, there's just all these, there's groups coming now and everybody is just playing because I think society has realized we fucked up. <laughs> we fucked up by just giving our kids Game Boys and now they're all, you know, they, they can't tolerate life, they're afraid of everything and eh. But now we're seeing that shift where yeah, it seems a little weird, we're being a little weird, but we're pushing them to play and have fun. And then when it's time to sit down, then it's time to sit down. But I was, I will tell you guys, I was really shocked that Drusilla loved, she genuinely loves Tae Young so much. It's yeah, how, so is, how is that relationship with them? It was, it's so good. It's like weird. I've never seen, a, a, I've never seen a child that age difference, like be that nice and kind. And she's so, she's, she loves playing with him. She talks to him and she just loves him. It's, it's really sweet. It, it's just, it's, you get to see a sweet side of, of Drusilla. Okay. Like that, that I've never even really seen. She it, it's like, as if her feminine instincts come out where, you know, she, <laughs> she's there and, it, you know, brother needs a bottle. He needs a diaper change, Nana. You know, that kind of thing. So, <laughs> it's really sweet. So you spent some time over in Korea as well. Um, I, my understanding is, and you can confirm or deny or not answer, but shortly after 
Devin and Taeyang went over there, you followed behind with, I believe you came with Drusilla and then you guys just didn't appear anywhere on camera is my understanding. What did you, what was your thought? Now I've lived in South Korea, not the same place that Devin and Ji Hoon live, but what, what was your take on their whole living situation? And I mean, granted at the time, I think they were all trying to cram in the one bedroom apartment or something, but which I understand has changed now, but what are your thoughts? Now you got me in a pickle. Cause now I just, I, I don't know what answer. I can say about okay. Korea. So okay. I can tell you about what I think of Korea, but I can't tell you about what, whatever with them. Cause Dev, I don't, I don't know. Right. I've just been told no Korea talk. Okay. No Korea talk. Don't we don't want you to violate your contract. Why. So yeah, yeah. Like, we don't want to violate any, any NDAs. Um, at least not on, you know, recording. <laughs> anyway, okay, so you've been a lot of fun to talk to. And what's also been fun for me is you have your own YouTube channel. And I've watched a lot of your videos there to get some background on your thoughts and your views before this interview. And if you want to give us, if you could give us a brief summary of what your YouTube channel is about. So my YouTube channel, this new one, because I've been shut down so many times, is ultimately it's to teach people how not to be brainwashed and mind controlled. That, that is the sole purpose of my YouTube channel is to allow people to see patterns in other things and to try to break free from that so that they could, can become the individual they want to be and maybe we can evolve as a human species. And sometimes it takes you down a dark path. Um, right now, uh, I do focus a lot on pedophilia, unfortunately, and that's just because of the academic papers that I have coming in um, that are really pushing for kind of a dystopic future that I don't even think academia sees what they're doing at this point. So, yeah, it's just I fight the good fight until I piss off the wrong person and they delete me again. <laughs> so if somebody is interested in learning more about your views, where can they find you? Just uh, uh, go to Toxic Threads on YouTube. That's where I am. But you can always find me on my my website, eliciaclegg.com, E-L-I-C-I-A. C-L-E-G-G dot com. That one's always there. And I try to uh, upload where I'm going to be. But my my uh, website's under construction right now I because I'm IT and IT hasn't had time to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand from social media that you've got uh, Devin and Jihoon and the kids all there with you for Thanksgiving, the Thanksgiving holiday, which is great. Yeah. I get my kids for Thanksgiving this this year as well, so I'm very excited about that. Um, and I think it's great get all the chickens back in. Um, is great. They, do, they should do a vlog on that because he has never had turkey. So, oh, so his first American Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this. Okay. So somebody needs to strap a GoPro to your head and film this because I want to see Ji Hoon experiencing his first American Thanksgiving. Yeah. We'll have to catch up afterwards and you'll have to tell me about it because I would be interested in seeing that. So you've been a lot of fun to talk to and this has been great and you've had a lot of great information for us. And I hope that we get to talk again sometime. So uh, thank you for joining me on the broadcast. Thanks for having me. And thank you, Mother Devin, Alicia, Toxic Threads. We are so glad to have you. I'm so glad that you sat down with me and took the time out of your day and your weekend with your all your kids there to talk with me and share all of that fascinating information. Yeah, that was cool. Thank you, Mother Devin. And... That's that's it. I think we're we've got some shout out, a couple shout outs. Oh, let me do the shout outs. Can okay. I do the shout outs? You can do the shout outs. I love this part. This is my favorite part. Keep them coming. How do people give you a shout out? So these are shout outs from the dump on our website, talkersoffraud.com. You can go to and there's a form like a web a box you fill out and your name and your email address in a box. You just write whatever you want to write there. If you have questions, if you have comments, concerns, you want to propose. 
No. Not to had a life mate. No. Some of you are trying that. Really? Yeah. I got a couple of proposals. No, not quite proposals. Because I did your fraud and night live with you again this past Friday. Yeah, but but there's there's and there's some you know I am starting to get kind of I feel like I'm kind of a big deal. He's he's starting to get a following. You guys, this I is am. his going to his head. It's I'm a gonna whole start thing. my own Instagram, and then I'm going to tell people I've never met you before. And then I'm going to say, and then I'm going to send them nude pictures of you. And then I'm going to, again, say I've never met you before. You don't have nude pictures of me. No, but I will get some. <gasps> Revenge porn. Dun, dun, dun. I've by the way. I've I'm never sorry. met him. No, we don't know each other. <laughs> um, by the way, on the website, uh, what else can people find there? What would be another reason for people to go to the website? The podcast. Of course. And? Oh, and our merch store. <laughs> oh, as we look again, still, around this room that we're sitting in. I can't. Let's turn. I'm going to. No, 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 no. Look let's, at the bed. Let's here. not. Let's you guys. Okay. One, so. Two, no. Uh, three, four. I can five, tell you there's about 45 six, of them. 45 of these bags. I know that's not part of the merch store. Yeah. So why'd you even go there? I just want them gone. Okay. Those are the swag bags, you guys. They are going out in waves. Please if come and get them. If you've ordered them, then, then you can. Um, they will be in the mail soon. They're $30, which includes priority shipping. That's all of that great swag. There's other merch available on the store. There's fraud, the Fraudcast branded stuff, as well as other stuff like uh, So Much Beautiful, So Much Angry, things like that on um, wine glasses and water bottles and some mugs and other things like that. So if you're interested in any of that kind of merch or swag, check out the website. And the website is? Talkersoffraud.com. Thank you. I'm still working on getting the broadcast, but, you know, it takes some time. We're going to turn you into a broadcaster. And I want... You're already a broadcaster. Right. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, go ahead. I'm a fraud. (laughs) (laughs) I am getting the website fixed, by the way. For those of you guys, I know know the the e-commerce portion is is terrible, and there's a lot of other things that are a mess. I've got got a new web designer in there, and her first comment was like, oh, my God, this is a mess. I can't do this myself. My dad's going to help. So we're getting it looked at. So don't judge me on the website. Yeah, it'll be fixed. All right, let's go to the shout-outs from The Dump. And uh, again, thanks for leaving those. We're going to start with Jen. Jen writes. Nothing. Nothing. Jen. No I don't message. Think, I don't think you know how to use the form. It, under When you, she submitted something, and, and we have her name, but then there's no message. So Jen, there's a, on the form, there's a little thing that says message, and there's a little box. She, she didn't write anything. You type words in there, and then we get to see them. So, <laughs> but, God. But thank you, Jen. We appreciate you reaching out just to let us know. <laughs> just say hi. That you're there. Okay. New one. Next one. Uh, Laura. Laura says, just had to tell you that the interview with Danielle was everything. I was so giddy listening to her. I've seen some people calling Angela the queen, but honestly, I feel that Danielle walked so Angela could run. Thanks for dumpster diving so I don't have to. That is a nice message from Laura. Thank Laura, you, Laura, thank you so much. I love that interview. As you guys could tell, I was giddy the whole time talking to her as well. Yeah, you totally were. You were giddy the week ahead. You were giddy the <laughs> three days before. You were giddy the day of. You were giddy afterwards. I can confirm all the giddiness. Okay. Uh, and uh, then the last one we have this week from Becky. Becky wants to know, can I get the broadcast on my Android. And the answer to that is yes. That is Google Play is your option, your native app there on an Android, although you can listen to us on any podcast app if you have another one that you prefer, like Spotify or Stitcher, High Heart Radio, any of those, those are it's also available, but the native app is Google Play. She also says I like the picture on your podcast. I'm guessing the album art, she means. I'll go find it, download it, see you later, thanks. So talk about that album art real quick. Oh, okay. Because I remember you worked on that thing for a long time leading up to the launch of this thing. Right, so I worked with a designer. and I had this vision in my head of what I wanted, and the end result is this woman who has the pill that's the 90 Day Fiance logo right where she's like taking the drug right and it's got a very pop art feel so in in my head i had this idea that it's this woman because you know i'm a woman and at the time i was doing talkers of fraud with talker and before all that and so (laughs) before you know all that before all that happened paul beach post if you're interested go ahead (laughs) 
So then, so I had this image and I worked with a designer to get my image, to get my idea brought to life. And we went back and forth a few times. And after a few edits, she nailed it. She just absolutely nailed the idea in my head, and it was perfect. And then... Well, who's the designer? Her name is Sarah Dawdy. Sarah Dawdy. Oh, that's right. I say her name at the end of every show, don't yes, I? Yes, you do. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And she is um, uh, out of... Laramie, Wyoming. No, she's in a different country. Oh. <laughs> so not Wyoming. I don't know why I've now mentioned Laramie twice on this show. I found her on the website Fiverr, which is F-I-V-E-R-R, where you can find a lot of uh, designers, people that do this type of thing. Freelancers. Graphic artists. Freelancers. Sorry. Oh, okay. MS Brainhole hit me there. That's all right. So you can get freelance designers, web designers, although that's where I got my first web designer and it was terrible experience. So, yeah, no. <laughs> Your mileage may vary is what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. But Sarah Dottie did a great job on she that. She did. Though. She did. Thank you, and, Sarah. And she will do any revisions that I need. I own the rights to the artwork. I had the source files, all of it. And then when I needed to make an edit to the file, I was able to do so. Yeah. Because I own the artwork. So that's all from uh, that's all from the dump. So what that's else? That's it. No. Well, we have uh, Thanksgiving's coming up. Thanksgiving is coming up. And we have our kids this year. We do. Both of them will be here. Yes. Baby, what do you call them? Baby, baby, baby frauded. Baby frauded and, and baby life mate. No, oh, baby faux stepdaughter. Yeah, my and, daughter. My yeah, kid. yeah. We have two kids. We have his kid and my kid, it's and be great. they're collectively our kids. Um, even though each of us only contributed half the DNA to one of each of them. Does that Think, make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You guys know what you guys know what I mean. You know what we mean. You know how it works. Um, fingers crossed because I saw that the, um, the winds might be too high in New York city for the floats to fly at the Macy's parade. Oh no. So fingers crossed that doesn't happen. Well, it's okay. The kids are just going to want to play Pokemon on the switch anyway. Well, I want to watch the Macy's parade. Well, we have other TVs in this house. I know, but I mean, it's like, that should be like forced family fun. I, I tried to do it last year when you were working or two years ago when we had them. And I'll it, be here this time. It was not successful. The kids were not interested. All right. What kind of pie are you going to pick for Thanksgiving? Um, I'm going to always go with pumpkin pie because if you don't eat pumpkin pie out of the pan, <laughs> then we can't be friends. <laughs> you know, I think I, I, I said before I was going to go blueberry pie. I think I might be throwing a curveball. I think I might go that chocolate pie that I like. Oh, like the Oreo okay. Oreo crust kind of thing. Okay. Well, the kids have picked... Uh, Baby foe stepped up. We need a better name for her. But yeah, we'll come up with one. She picked um, a Reese's pie. Yeah, and Reese's peanut butter pie. Yeah, and baby frauded has uh, Oreo cookie pie. All so solid it's, choices. It's a tradition in our house that everybody gets their own pie, and yeah. they, in addition to helping with like choosing particular side dishes that that they want and yeah. whatnot, like you picked and, and southern baked mac and cheese, and we don't eat it all in one day. Yeah. All right. These pies will sit in the fridge for like two weeks. And the kids usually don't even finish theirs. They didn't last year. <laughs> so it's kind of a waste. Yeah. So big Thanksgiving planned here. Hope you have a great one. Um, next week, my co-host. Oh, I'm fired next week? Next week, you're fired. All right, great. Yeah. You get to watch the kids next week. <laughs> next week, Hanakawa is going to join me again. Oh, I love her. Yes. Nice. Yes. So we have, in my workings with her on that interview and co-hosting, we've become friends. And a lot of you guys have asked for her to come back. And she is coming back next week. All right. I get the week off. Yes. So not, yeah. not from producing, though. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. Okay. Yeah. You guys are going to miss him, aren't you? Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> maybe I'll pop up. Maybe I'll pop up on your Friday night live again. When can people catch you on that? Uh, Friday nights at nine thirty at on Instagram live. There you go. Yeah. This week it might be a little late because I have to go celebrate one of my sponsees' two year anniversary. Yay. Two, two years sobriety. Sobriety versus sobriety. Bill W. Yeah, so soberversary. She hit two years. She's celebrating on Friday night as her sponsor. I'm so going to be there. So I may be a little past nine thirty, maybe closer to ten o'clock Eastern. Maybe I'll just start it myself. What do you think of that? No. You can give me the password. I'll do it. No. Just let me do it. No. We'll talk about it. No. And I'm frauded by TLC, and I'm dumpster diving, so you don't have to. You can find your fraudcaster on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at frauded by TLC, and on the web at talkersoffraud.com. This broadcast has been produced and edited by yours truly, art by Sarah Dawdy. 
Music written, produced, and performed by Umami. Segment producer at iHeart Reality TV shows. Further assistance provided by many unnamed fraud consultants.